Reverend Anne, who is going to give us the power talk this morning, <laughs> the encouraging talk this morning. And Reverend Anne is no stranger to us, so I'll turn over to you, Reverend Anne. <laughs> Good morning, good morning, everyone. What a wonderful morning so far. Happy Mother's Day to all. And this is the month of May when we have child, child month. It's child month. We have Nurses Week, Teacher's Day. So it's a month of celebration. So on this beautiful day, and thank you, Laura. Thank you so much. Carol. Faith. And boy, I tell you, I didn't say anything. They wrote what came from the heart. And then Spirit gave me some other tips. And um, this synchronicity is out of this world. Anyway, you will see. <laughs> As we honor the mother's principle, which encompasses those who have given birth or not, but given birth to loving and nurturing others and those persons who simply bring out the best in us, no matter what their appearances are. And when I look at your grandchildren, Kayla, Liam, you know, that love and trust that I know of, having dealt with both children, I know it will ripple through the generations of your families. Thank you for being the role models that you are. My reflections this morning is titled, We Are the Gifts of God. I share this excerpt from a poem which was part of a Thanksgiving service for a beloved teacher of mine in high school. It is from Roy Croft's poem on love. I love you, not only for what you are, but for what I am. I love you, not only for what you have made of yourself, but for what you are making of me. I love you for the part of me that you bring out. I love you for putting your hand into my heaped up heart and passing over all the foolish, weak things that you can't keep help dimly seeing there and for drawing out into the light all the beautiful belongings that no one else had looked quite far enough to find. I love you because you are helping me to make of the lumber of my life not a tavern, but a temple. You are helping me to make of the lumber of my life not a tavern, but a temple. A temple. Pure poetry. It's beautiful. But it's of significance to each one of us because we have been the recipients of love like that. Or in our own way, we act as midwives, bringing forth transition in others, where we overlook, look through the inconsistencies, and permit the temples of their souls to shine through. I use the word Midwives, as Miriam Webster gives a definition of midwifery as the art, act, or process of producing, bringing forth, or bringing about, end of quote. So I say kudos to the midwives of the health and wellness ministry, the celebrating Nurses Week soon. And these professional medical personnel that impact the medical and sociological infrastructure of our communities. They have been bringing out the best in our rural communities. I am one of those that the brown nurses had to run after to give um, vaccinations. Thank God for them. <laughs> but friends, it is important for us to know that we are all love made manifest. And from our heaped up hearts, we bring forth the gifts from the souls of all who come into contact with us. Let us reaffirm what we know about ourselves in the words of Bishop Desmond Tutu from his African prayer book. He stated, and I quote, we were created by love, 
for love and so that we should love. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, is what God said to Jeremiah. These are words that apply to each of us. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. We were planned for from all eternity. None of us is a mere divine afterthought. None of us is an accident. End of quote. Yes, parents may not have deliberately planned for offspring, but God is all there is. When they came, by whatever means, it is deemed the right and perfect time for each one of us to be part of this magnificent journey of life. All of us, whether you time it or you don't time it, is God time, and it's time we were here. So that throw that, debunk that one out of the social norms. We are here, friends, to contribute to the elevation of consciousness into our true selves. All of us play a part. Bishop Tutu goes on to state, you do not therefore need to do anything to earn or deserve God's love. You don't need to impress God so that God will love you. God already loves you, and God will love you forever and ever, end of quote. Another way to think about this is that the loving kindness, the givingness of spirit in order to experience more of itself incarnated us out of itself. This love is infinite, it's perfect, and it's eternal. So yes, we are aware of our integral part of the universal creative process. Everything is an expression of God's life and love. So what is in our house of consciousness then? It must be love. Therefore, it is possible to share, give love, or just simply loving for love's sake. I mean sincere love, no motive, no agendas. Sincere appreciation for the humankind that we are. Yes, we are spiritual beings having a human experience, but we must appreciate that it is our humanity that is the vehicle for the expression of our divinity. And we are here to expand it further. In a sense, we are our brother and we are our sister. So what is in our consciousness of love? Let's look at 2 Kings chapter 4. It's not by accident that this chapter has two stories about women, mothers who loved beyond the norm. Verses 1 to 7 has the story of the widow who was not ready to lose her sons to debts, so she went to Elisha for help. And verses 8 to 37 is the story of that graceful Shunanite woman of faith. So we are reflecting on the story of the widow and that small cruise of oil that overflowed to pay off debts, saving our sons, and provide for her family. The story forms the base for a basic law of some oil of life. The question then is, what are we now expressing from the oil of life or the oil of love that is within us? We, what are we giving from the overflow that is within each one of us? So if we look at the story again, she utilized what she had in her conscious awareness and from right where she was. She was not about to borrow or wait for a better opportunity. She utilized what she had inside and let it flow. We do the same as the widow and let that spirit deepen our awareness of the love within. All of us allow that love to flow over in our life and affairs. We can expand our reach and influence by first denying that there is separation from our source of love and two, affirming who we are and what we are being as love made manifest. Denial and affirmation metaphysically are the two sons. So the widow in each one of us opened the valves in our conscious awareness by that spiritual practice of de denial and affirmation to let the overflow of love bless 
and appreciate all who come into contact with us. We are love made manifest, friends, fulfilling the givingness of spirit through us and as us. So we can assist in the bringing forth of the gifts in each other so we can live in a world of love that works for everyone. No one is impossible to love. Everybody deserves to be loved. Dr. Holmes shares in his book, Ideas for Living, and I quote, we should give up, give up of ourselves in love and service to others in a spirit of generosity and good fellowship. To refuse to give is to refuse to receive, for everything moves in circles. Real giving is the givingness of the self, a kind word, a thoughtful act, perhaps just a smile can help lighten the burden of others, end of quote. Fine, the investment in giving ushers in the receiving of good. It is a law, but beyond the mechanical image-seeking donation and so on, the spirit behind in giving honestly gets us beyond the foolish, weak things, the clumsy, lumbering mistakes, to the point of giving of real love, respect, and appreciation for the Christ within each other. Friends, it is a privilege to love and be loved. It simply feels good. From the widow's point of view, let us start right here, because we have the intention within us to be ambassadors of love. So we just love. Just love. There is no rule book. Everybody has a hypothesis of do's and don'ts. But the truth is, we were created out of love and nothing else. Even in the face of some of the choices of dissonance that we make, everyone has the capacity to love and feel love. Yes, there may be concrete blocks in the heart, but we know a little blade of love can crack that. You see that? It is a law. A blade of grass can crack concrete and asphalt. So a little blade of love can crack the hardness in some of us. Seeming hardness, I say. Love trickles in and love flows out and soon the walls break away and we express the love that we are. We are gifts of love from God to each other. Alan Coyne in his book, Lifestyles of the Rich in Spirit, states, why do we feel so happy in the presence of someone who loves us? This can be our friends, family, and associates. But also do not forget that when we practice the presence of God through whatever spiritual means, in that communion, common union, there's a sense of peace, satisfaction that allows us to feel happy. So while our friends and family make us feel happy, because they see the good in us, they remind us that we are lovable, and in our hearts, we know that we are lovable. And we want to live in this love that we richly deserve. So that's why Mrs. Sucker can tell you that you need to practice self-love, self-care. Because that is what you richly deserve. Because that's what you are. Every bit of your DNA is created out of love. They, our friends also assist in the awakening of the majesty and beauty of spirit within each one of us. They help us to discover the treasure of gifts within the temple of our being. And we want to share just that. They sometimes have to act as mirrors for the best or otherwise in some of us. But what is more, in their company, we get to see who we are. And we relish the good, the love. And we give more of the same because that's what you're enjoying. He states something very profound. He says, truly, it is an act of love to accept love. For in so doing, we acknowledge that we are lovable. We do love ourselves. This is our greatest purpose. And we want to live in the presence of our wonder. We want to live in the presence of our wonder. Our own wonder. Because as we love ourselves, that stamp of individuality, God in us, as us, that each one of us came with to this plane of existence will emerge no matter what the circumstance. 
we will always gravitate to this circle of friends and family, even casual contacts that allow the wonder of our true selves to grace this earth plane. So yes, as we awaken to the beauty, majesty, and wonder within us, we can, from our heaped up hearts of love, see beyond the seeming dissonance to the reality of the God presence in every individual. So with every engagement with another, we keep an open mind, and we are guided as to what to say and to be. Yes, some of us are spontaneous, but we have to learn to listen to the urgings of spirit. This is where the importance of forgiveness is key, giving up that sense of otherness and conflict to embrace the wonder of the true loves that we are. Forgiveness is an important part of that spiritual practice of compassion, where we release the hurts, the judgments, and the grievances, not only that because they're not good for our mental health, and we get to truly behold the Christ love within each individual. We get to open out and bring forth the imprisoned splendor within each and every person that come into contact with us. So we actively involve ourselves in sacred service with each and every one. Every act of kindness, every blessing bestowed on another is sacred. Every act of love by way of serving others is service par excellence. Just a smile, seeing the true reality behind the masks of pain and judgment is visioning correctly. Random acts of kindness, cultivating the habit of thinking, saying, sincere complimentary things about each other. Yes, we may not warm up to everyone, but if she has on a Jimmy shoe, sandals to live for, say so and smile. Right, Carmen? Where she is? She have on the Jimmy Choo sandals today. <laughs> she have some sandals there that she is to live for. Mm. So, you know, you don't know when that compliment will lift somebody's spirit. Lift them and cause transformation to take place at a level that sometimes they don't even know of. So give the compliments and be sincere about it. We have so much to compliment each other about. Alan Cohen suggests that the greatest service we can perform then is to see the beauty in everyone, to see the good. And he says you get major benefits from seeing the good. He says, one, you'll experience success in all your endeavors and enjoy rewarding relationships. Why? The law of attraction supports us then if we affirm success for others. Our thoughts, feelings vibrate at that level, bringing forth success into our lives. Number two, empowerment and support for others. Propagate that in others who come into contact with us. Everyone in our circle will bring out this success as well. Everyone benefits from our own spiritual growth and unfoldment. And the third one, our feelings of self-love fill us with happiness and joy. And guess what is the spin-off? We are irresistible. Happiness and self-love. We know of that. Some of us are truly, all of us are irresistible to somebody coming into our life and affairs. We are gifts of love to the universe. And I'm reminded of a story that was told by Alan Cohen. And it goes like this. A Dr. Decker, a chiropractor in Inglewood, New Jersey, relates this story which he said changed his life. When he was a young man in New Jersey, a very shabbily dressed man came into his office. The man was dirty, unkept, and he emanated an unpleasant odor. He had no money, but he asked for a treatment. Dr. Decker was reluctant to see him, but he did so. While Dr. Decker's initial reaction was an aversion to the man's appearance, he remembered that a lesson of happiness was to find something you can appreciate in every situation. He scanned the man's appearance and could find nothing that he appreciated. Then he looked down at the man's shoes 
and he noticed that they were neatly tied. This was the one thing about the man that he could honestly say he liked. So he focused on the tidiness of the shoelaces as he did the treatment. In fact, a rapport was established during the treatment and the man went happily on his way. A few days later, the man returned in a significantly better condition. He told Dr. Decker that he owed him a great debt of thanks. Several days earlier, he felt that he was at the end of his rope. He walked from New York City to the George Washington Bridge with the intention to jump off the bridge. When he got to the bridge, he decided to give himself one more chance. So he kept walking over the bridge, hoping to find some kind of help on the other side. The first place he saw on the other side was Dr. Decker's office, and so he walked in the door. He said, I want to thank you for being so kind to me, doctor, the man shared. I think that if you had turned me away, I might have gone back to the bridge and jumped. But you didn't, and I'm encouraged to live because of your kindness, end of quote. I am encouraged to live because of your kindness. Friends, what is the essence behind the story? Every day, we get the opportunity to bring forth the beauty of others, their gifts of greatness, by starting right where we are with a little love, and we can truly bless a life into wholeness. Let us affirm together, and I'll read it once. I am a channel through which divine love flows. Together, I am a channel through which divine love flows. I am centered in love, anchored and secure in this truth. I am centered in love, anchored and secure in this truth. And my homework to you right now, starting in the temple, is to look at each other and say, I bless the Christ in you. So you start doing that now for the rest of the week, right? Even if you don't verbally say it aloud, just as you look in the eyes of another, I bless the Christ in you. So let us continue to live in love, friends, because all is indeed well with us. Happy Mother's Day to you all. Namaste. Thank you, Reverend Anne. Boy, I don't know how you sum up that, you know. But there are some nuggets that I took from that. And I'm going to start with what Rev started with. Love is the house of the consciousness, of our consciousness. And if we start from that place, then we'll utilize what we have inside of us. Like the story of Elijah. The lady had her oil, and that's what she started with, right? She also indicated and reminded us that everyone deserves love, yes? And that we must give of ourselves, give of our service, give that compliment. You know what I mean? Whatever you have, if it's coming from that house of love, then it will be appreciated and it will go far away. And of course, the self-love, right? There has to be that self-love for us to be able to Give that love, right? So those are the few things. I can't go through everything that she said. We're, we're planned for. We're here in God's timing. Forget whatever we hear before. We are here in God's timing. Everybody's planned for. Lots of nuggets there, Rev. Thank you so much.